the 12th day, June 2023. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm going to be your host tonight. My name is Dana Durnford. I hope you're having a great night and a great day. We got oodles and oodles of information to get through again. Thanks to the perpetual nut house known as nuclear. We got a poll that kind of sums it up. At uh, somewhere. Has the nuclear power industry condemned itself beyond repair by faking Japan's reactors four and reactor three fuel pools? I'm going to explain that for you. <clears throat> Hopefully. <clears throat> What have I got down here? Okay, so let's react to three to stump a reactor three to your left to stump a reactor four. Um, number four, radiation streaming into the atmosphere. So when the fuel pool catches fire, it's you can kiss it all goodbye, and, and obviously. What remains of the building is just a fraction of the former building, maybe one quarter of the 190 foot building is left. And so they built this contraption off site. They sent it there and assembled it <coughs> with a lot of homeless people, I guess, uh, sacrificed. And then they towered up and over it. And then they pretended that it looked like this at the top of this building that no longer exists. And they've done the same thing for reactor three. And they being many, many medias are actually pretending they're at the fuel pools which are located at the top of the buildings. Uh, and so that's what the poll is tonight. Has they condemned themselves by doing that? Like they can fool a, a percentage of the people, but those in the know will know the difference, right? And so what they're pretending to the right is impossible. And reactor three did on the same thing. Now, the fuel pool's at the very top of this uh, massive buildings. These are huge buildings. It's hard to give you context for these buildings. So at Reactor 4 contraption. Using only one wire. Therefore, even in the unlikely event that one of the wires breaks, the cask will not fall. The so cask is trans... That's TEPCO actually pretending they're at the top of this building. They built this contraption. You can see the whole setup there. <clears throat> Where they built this contraption and pretended that they're in the fuel pool, which looks like that. And that's the official picture on top of the building that doesn't exist anymore. So the building actually doesn't exist. And they constructed this, whatever you want to call it. Now, this doesn't physically touch the building. Then they pretend it looks like this and that they're actually physically in the building. So that's how they've done it. And the question is, why would you go through such an extreme to have the whole world's media pretend that they're in these buildings' fuel pools. That's the, the fuel pool 
reactor, legend of reactor three. <clears throat> and so what else have you been up to? If they're willing to do something like this, the big question then is what else have they been up to? So reactor three has the same attributes. Um, think about the radiation at this place for starters after the accident. The workers who were trying to restore power on March the 18th. Um, well, you can't restore power to these buildings, for instance. That's what they looked like on March the 18th. The water cannons are unable to spray the reactors. They had to run away because of high radiation. The helicopters had to run away because of high radiation. But officially, it looks like that. And of course, officially, that's the official picture and that's the official picture. So in they came out, I think it was 2019, <coughs> and they announced they're going to get the fuel out of reactor three. They show us this picture. We ridiculed them for six days straight, and then they said there was a few problems, and we never heard from them again until 2020, when they claimed all the fuel was now out of the pools at the top of the buildings that no longer exist. I'll get there at some point, hopefully. So the fuel pulls at the very top of the buildings. The buildings actually doesn't even exist. <coughs> Japan begins removal uh, of fuel at the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Again, this is the official picture. That's the official picture at the top of this building that don't exist. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you twice. So here's the actual explosion of reactor three, by the way. And you can see the fuel pool in a second fall back down with gravity. See how the smoke drifts away? But look at these big chunks that fall straight back down. That's the fuel pools and the reactor cores falling back down. So, uh, so you, you can see the big black pieces falling straight down. So it's kind of hard to comprehend, but it was the same size as that building. It was right alongside of it. And so look how big the piece that's falling is almost the same as the top of that building, for instance. <coughs> right, so the size, the width of that piece is almost the width of this piece here. It's almost the width of that piece right there. <clears throat> and let me just motion you through that uh, so you can appreciate it. Just falling down. There's a couple of pieces of similar size. Right, so originally that was that center building you're looking at. So the center building you're looking at, I'm just going to manually, you can see this explosion deforming, the fireball, and let's play it a couple times. So there are 190 foot buildings, there are 65 meter buildings. 19-story buildings, apartment buildings, think about that. Far more radioactivity inside the spent fuel ponds, which is a terrible name, than in reactors. And so some estimates were um, 30 to 40 times Chernobyl. 
it's each reactor was also originally estimated to have a hundred times Chernobyl. That was by Russia. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, the media is, what the hell, man? Why does it hate us so much? Why does it hate us so much, I wonder? Just hang on here. We'll Unfortunately, when I put Chernobyl in, I'm going to get the book, right? There you go. But it'll show up pretty quick. And that's the clip here. Let me adjust the volume. <laughs> As we all know, is how that can go south on everybody. The uh, fact that uh, the reactor in Japan is a uh, hundred times more powerful than the one in Chernobyl. And a reactor in Japan is a uh, hundred times more powerful than the one in Chernobyl. The reactor in Japan is a hundred times more powerful than the ones at Chernobyl. <clears throat> and that's actually a good estimate because they were old buildings, right? Whereas Chernobyl was brand new. That's the stump of a 19-story apartment building. Think about that. Or think of it as a 65-meter building. Or think of it as a 190-foot tall building. And so they built this contraption off-site. It doesn't physically touch the remains because you can see it's very fragile. And it's just it's meant to cover it up and then pretend. Then they're going to pretend. And they always have these weird pictures of them in their brand new paper suits pointing somewhere in the distance. And so magically, 100 feet above that, now exists this. And that's, they hoodwinked everybody by doing something like that, right? Uh, each reactor holds 3,450 spent fuel assemblies. I think they're ta obviously they're talking about the fuel pools. There's two fuel pools at the top of each building. Each assembly is around 1,800 pounds. has 100 rods, and each rod is 12 feet and weighs 18 pounds. The Houthis are accusing Saudi Arabia of dumping toxic waste in Yemeni waters. Uh, now they're finding high radiation levels in different areas. The, the Ministry of Fisheries alleged Saudi Arabia was discharging nuclear or toxic waste from foreign companies in Yemen territory. If you want to poison um, a small country, radiation is the best way to do it. The Ministry of Fisheries accused uh, Saudi Arabia, the international recognized Yemen government, of burying nuclear and toxic waste in Yemen's territory. stressing that the country's marine safety was a red line. He claimed high radiation levels were detected along the coastlines as a result of the toxic nuclear waste dumped by foreign companies. It's allegedly killed uh, thousands of tons of fish and damaged the coral reefs. And efforts to turn Yemen into a dump of toxic waste represent a crime against humanity. An international community must take immediate action to stop it. And so there's been incredible civil conflicts. But that's quite a statement. Now, 100% could be true. And if it's not true, then that's Fukushima fallout. <clears throat> because that country is not, don't long have a functional government, the propaganda machine is not effective there, right? 
And so they're not, they're gonna report numbers they're finding with legitimate equipment. And the only way they can count for it is to blame that other country or Saudi Arabia, which wouldn't surprise me at all, actually done it. So Ukrainian nuclear plant, uh, Zapophoria, that's my version and a few medias, but I've heard different versions of that pronunciation. I don't speak Ukrainian, so I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Grossi, disgusting Grossi, from the International Atomic Energy Agency, said there's a difference about six feet from the reservoirs that cooled the plant. And uh, now there's, as far as I know, for the last six months, there's no running reactors at this site. Now, and they always, not always, but the majority of the time you're going to see this picture right here. And that's on the other side of the river. But if you do an aerial shot, you'll see it's surrounded by farms, which is a, quite the enigma we're seeing with all nuclear power plants. Uh, well, the majority, almost all of them, are surrounded by, right up to the gates, surrounded by farms because they're always emitting heavy radiation. That's a good way to move the radiation away and by proxy get rid of a lot of humans. The problem with radiation is it's indiscriminate. So it's a war crime on its own where it attacks everything. It, it's it, um, Every, you know, all the species, all the animals, mammals, birds, insects, and all the humans, nothing is immune to the radiation. There was a 6.2 magnitude earthquake that hit Japan's Hakito Islands. And we've covered a lot of stories about Hakito Island and earthquakes. Now, they have a nuclear power plant. The earthquake is in the white, and the nuclear power plant is highlighted with a red marker. And so they're a few hundred kilometers away, but that means nothing in our earthquake. And so we have legitimate reasons to be concerned about <clears throat> that part of the country. In 2018, they had a, they reported a 6.6 .6 earthquake. <clears throat> Excuse me. They reported six and six point six earthquake. Two thousand eighteen, did I say nineteen? Get to it here, we'll get there. There we go. So, this was really something because Earth, so it was reported. I'm going to go back, step back to 2018 for a moment, just because you're probably not aware of this if you knew here. Earthquake buried homes under landslides in Okito. 22,000 people in the rescue efforts. 22,000 people in the rescue. Uh, it was reported as a 6.6. <clears throat> now, the problem with the earthquake as a 6.6, it registered a 6.7 on the Japanese Shindo scale of 7. 
It had 130 aftershocks. It registered a magnitude of 6.7 and a maximum intensity of 7 on the Shin There are two different scales. The 6.7 is the international. The maximum intensity of 7 is the Shindo scale, is the 7. So, so say, say it was a 6.7 on the Shindo scale at a 7, that's a 9.5. So you would expect to see some pretty severe damage if it was an actual 9.5. And so you can see the landslide, well, you can see the houses. So when you look at the landslides, it gives you more context. But what was unique about it because they, they pawned it off as a 6.6, 6.7 on the international scale, was look at the mountains where it dropped all the payloads on both sides of the mountains. And look at the damage. It was absurd damage. This is why there's 22,000 people. But they pawned that earthquake off as a 6.7 magnitude. But it dropped the payloads of all those mountains for a very, very long distance. The Tamari nuclear power plant, you can see where that's to. Then the earthquake in red, you can see where that's to. So you have to worry because that's pretty close to where they had the earthquake yesterday. So this is the earthquake from yesterday. And I, I plotted it out on the map for us to see, because you gotta worry about that other nuclear power plant. You gotta think about the one that they, they hit you know, if you've never been here before, even if you have, you've never seen an earthquake that dropped the payloads on all the mountains before. I've never seen it. I don't know of anybody that have seen anything like this. I've never even heard tell of anything like that. But it got pawned off. And so when I found out last night there was a 6.2, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Who knows what they're up to, see? You can't trust them. And uh, so there was a lot of stories reporting on it. So when you see a lot of big media reporting on it, then you start to get nervous what's going on. But there wasn't a single one of these stories. I read all these stories last night right after the show. And not a single one talked about the Japanese seismic intensity scale, not, not a single one. They're really, really good at the cover-up. And only one of them told you where exactly the distance is, but that, that was in latitude and longitude. If it's anywhere, out in the wor anywhere else in the world, they'll tell you the miles from the nearest town and the miles or kilometers of how deep it was. Japan's the only country that uses consistently uh, an evasive tactic like latitude and longitude. Very rare for them to plot it on a map for you on top of that. 42.5 40, degrees north and longitude 142 east, which was right there. Now they're showing that on land. I'm showing it on land, rather. It was apparently offshore, but there was no worries of an earthquake. And the reason there's no, or a tsunami, the reason no worries about a tsunami, because it's not on the fault line where the fault line is going to slip, right? So these are like induction deep earth earthquakes. Whereas the Fukushima earthquake was right off the coastline. Imagine building nuclear power plants right where the tectonic plates are vicious displacements and uh, that's nuclear. Only nuclear would build something dangerous in that zone.
Uh, representatives of the Japan's Fukushima Prefecture, other fishing groups once again opposed the discharge of the nuclear contaminated water into the sea. Oh, excuse me. So the, everything is in the tanks, Dana. It's all under control. Everything is in the tanks. Now, the real story, though, is, is nothing is in the tanks. The tanks were built to manipulate you. This model is, this is an actual cesium model. And this is on the, the 18th. This is seven days later. I'm going to speed it up. I'm going to speed it all the way up to 20 days. Right here is 20 days. So do you think everything is in the tanks? Or do you think the whole planet is getting covered with radioactive endless fallout? That's just one of the many, many different models. And we have the studies of the actual fallout on the other side of the Pacific on top of that. And I've done research expeditions on top of that. Another one you want to consider, that's covering the planet in a very short while, just like 20 days. But even this is their model. So their model shows all that is a nuclear wasteland. People had to move out of there. But don't worry, everything is in the tanks. Do you get it? They'll just, they just keep saying that. And they don't care if everybody believes them. They're just going to do what they're going to do because there's nobody effectively able to hold them accountable. There's no criminal courts to take them to. Uh, it's not illegal. <clears throat> it's not illegal to poison you with radiation. Uh, Congress and parliaments don't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you with radiation. The only people that can do that is the high priestess themselves, the Nuclear Regulatory Agency, and. The people that work there, legacies, the, the animosity equivalent of the devil. They got the job because they're just pure evil. So they convinced the world to be worried about something that might happen instead of something that's been happening for 12 years is a frightening, a frightening demonstration of evil. Hawaii Observatory detects a starburst in the pinwheel galaxy. And that's uh, uh, 21 million light years away from Earth. It doesn't mean other uh, species in the solar system can't travel fast. It just we, we can't master it yet, right? But advanced civilizations are out there. I guarantee you they mastered it. Just ask James Kirk. That's a joke, by the way. But it stands to reason that some civilizations would have mastered this kind of travel. So 21 million light years away from Earth, we should take all these scientists that are doing that and put them to work on geothermal or something like that, come up with solutions, right? And in their spare time, they can study that. Does that make sense? He stressed the ravages of flooding will almost inevitably lead to lower grain export. Oh, I skipped past it. So the dam that was blown up in Ukraine, most people are probably familiar with this story, that was also feeding the nuclear power plant, which has lost power multiple times in the last 14 months or something, which is unprecedented, has left 700,000 people without proper access to drinking water. But it's much more than that. Uh, 
so that the ravages of the flooding will likely almost inevitably lead to lower grain exports, higher food prices around the world. Wrap your mind around that statement. And less to eat for millions in need. Do you really think they didn't know what was going to happen when they done it? Which is the same thing happened when the war started, right? The exact same thing right there. And there was 59 other countries at war when Ukraine and Russia started. Well, NATO and Russia started. It's not Ukraine. Ukraine got jack shit. Ukraine would have been defeated a long time ago. This is a proxy war by NATO. So this is very, and, by, and orchestrated by UN. NATO doesn't do nothing without UN's okay. They're the puppet masters. And they rushed over landmines from the war, and they're about to see the mines floating in places where people don't expect them, threatening adults and children. Yeah, that's crazy, though, isn't it? Where the, the, they call it a war against another military, but they rarely fight each other. It's usually the civilians are the biggest casualty. And it goes long after the war is allegedly over. The war never actually ends. The United Nations will launch a special appeal for more aid funds for Ukraine. So the United Nations is the reason the war is happening in Ukraine. There's 195 militaries, and NATO is their little pet lap, lap dog. And um, so they create these, and that's why they have UNICEF too, because you create these crises for the victims, because they're never going to be the victim, right? It's always going to be your children that are the victims, it's never going to be them. Justin Trudeau was not going to go down there with a sniper's rifle or anything else and help the Ukrainians beat the Ruskies. But he wants your kids to go down there. University in India <coughs> plans testing solar and geothermal hybrid plant. Or not India, but... Um, um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, we talk about this a lot where f the first thing you should do is geothermal. And like uh, solar energy and wind energy are great, but they, they have scuttled storage for many decades. There is all kinds of solution, but they're not even looking for solutions. They're just going... Wind and solar works for some of the time, and then geothermal works for the rest of it. That's good enough. And they're right. They're 100% right. And it's nice to see that. Uh, another kind of direct use of geothermal, plastic recycling in Iceland. Iceland has a big geothermal uh, presence in their country. 24-hour shifts, uh, company production lines with a performance around 20 t 12 tons a day and a total of 2,000 tons of plastic per year. All done on geothermal. That's pretty impressive. El Salvador is pushing for 644 megawatts of geothermal. The new numbers I got on geothermal today are 3.4 million per megawatt, which is unbelievably cheap compared to nuclear. You can have it up and running in a year or two. And it lasts longer than nuclear, no shutdowns, no poisoning everybody for a thousand miles. You don't have to run away and leave your community if it breaks down. You don't have to sacrifice everybody over 60 if it breaks down. Geothermal energy contributes 20% of electricity consumed in El Salvador. Wow. The 
Department of Energy launched a 3.25 million American, now this is 2020, American made, it's probably still effective, American made geothermal manufacturing prize. But they give the fusion industry trillions of, rather billions of dollars to not even come up with a working model. To not even willing to throw 3.25 million for geothermal. The disparage is shocking. A first of its kind. That's, so, that's such a sad statement, right? For geothermal, the prize is designed to spur innovation and address manufacturing challenges. Fundamental operating in harsh geothermal environments. Uh, this prize further supports the ability of geothermal industry to reach the target of 60 gigawatts of electricity. They could have 600 if they actually tried, or 6,000, you know? And we covered this last night how they're going to use, one company is going to use um, high pressure water to split the rocks to, to get it ready for drilling. And another uh, solution they're using was uh, rock hammer, or pneumatic hammers too, to pulverize the rocks and then they can send the drill down, right? And so now they can drill seven times quicker than just drilling through rocks. So I think it was a uh, hundred feet a day or something. Now Quatsi Electric is going to use technology basically just to atomize the rocks that are in your way instead of trying to drill all the way down. What I got done here, I wonder, is the land atop of former uranium mines in Leed fit for residential development? It has never been done before. They never recreated a spot that was contaminated by uranium where you can now live in that environment. An environmental manage, program manager argued voluntary cleanup overseen by the state meets the same rigorous standards as a Superfund site, which it doesn't, right? So Gary Crocker, the principal owner of Silver Reef Investment Holdings, insists can. In fact, he's banking on it. He spent $15 million to advance his plan to build 100 homes on a nuclear wasteland. Because you can't claw back the waste from the environment, see? And it's not going to be isolated just to the site. So he's just strictly about greed. And you have never, ever been able to clean up a site, even with the, and their standards, they claim, are just as rigorous as if the industry is doing it, because but it's considered voluntary. You can't, like, there's no way, unless you're deeply knowledge, to even clean up a portion of it. And you need an absurd amount of technology at your fingertips to attempt to, you basically got to dig up the whole site, limb out every tree for a thousand miles, and dig up the topsoil for 15 inches for a thousand miles, to clean up a site that nuclear has hung out at. So they're saying, and this is early in the year, folks, here in Canada, they're saying 70% of Canada, and conditions are going to get worse, but 70% of Canada is dry. And like we're talking dry, dry. So the radioactive fallout basically kills the bacteria and the fungus in the land and the forest. And now the ecosystem can't live there. And so it can't soak up water either. That's what's going on. The water runs directly to the rivers or the ocean. And so um, the last number of years, we've noticed this phenomenon of going in the woods and sticking your arm down in an ant's nest. The ant's nests are there. 
but there's nothing in them. So three years of just randomly finding it, rants nest and just sticking your hand in there, name somebody else would do something like that besides me. <laughs> you see, an ant's nest, last thing that crashes your mind is sticking your arm in there, right? But I have the confidence that that's actually what I do. Thanks to the massive pulse from Fukushima. But that's a really interesting development right here, that this early in the year, 70% of the country is dry as a bone. So the forest fires aren't going to stop. The reason the forest fires are so crazy is because the foliage and the litter didn't break down because the foliage has wrecked the biota and the forest the ecosystem. And so the foliage and the, the litter is not breaking down but, and it's drying out. And when you get a lightning strike, then you got these great big lofts of flames rising up into the air. And so the forest fire just pummels forward with the wind. Hybrid energy will solve electricity woes in the Himalayan states. So what they're saying is, because they have a lot of geothermal, but again, they're basically uh, geothermal energy, wind energy, and solar energy should be used as a hybrid energy. And they figured out that that would do the job, right? <clears throat> and now they're going ahead with it. So wind, solar, and geothermal, because they're going to be putting their windmills on the mountains where the wind blows most, almost all the time, I think they'll do really good. It's encouraging when you see stuff like that anyway. This was a story that from back in the day. Uh, vegetables near a stricken plant. This is the 23rd of March. All the plants have already detonated and melted down and are in death mode. Vegetables near the stricken plant test high for radiation. So whenever it comes to food, I'm really, I have no choice but to read through it a few times to see um, because back in those days, they weren't as careful about the propaganda as they are now, but they weren't slack either. Finding radioactive material levels drastically, drastically exceeding legal limits in 11 types of vegetables. Well, radiation isn't a bigot or bias or racist or prejudice. It's going to contaminate all the vegetables equally, right? The news agency citing the ministry said that if a person eats 100 grams, three and a half ounces of the vegetables with the largest detected amount of radioactive material for about 10 days, it'll be equal to ingesting half the amount of radiation a person typically receives from natural environment in the year. Well, these are totally different. Man-made and natural got nothing to do with each other. There's zero to do with each other. These are completely different monsters. So that was a, that was a vicious lie, and that was on the 23rd, 2011. So that's 12 days later, vicious, hateful lies from the nuclear industry. If you keep eating the vegetables at the same pace, the amount of radiation intake could exceed the amount deemed safe. Well, there is no safe limits. A single atom sequestered in your muscles, your organs, or your bones, your body attacks it for the rest of your life with white blood cells. So when you eat french fries or, or bananas, your body doesn't attack that with white blood cells. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you cut your finger, your body attacks with white blood cells for six or seven days and repairs it then your red blood cell count goes back up. For every white blood cell, your red blood cell is displaced. So if you get a lot of radiation, you're consuming huge becquels per kilogram into your body.
The government of Fukushima Prefecture told residents not to eat leafy vegetables. Leafy vegetables. Uh, well, you can't eat anything. The leafy vegetables are worse because they cover, they soak up a lot of radioactive uh, particulates and fallout. But if you eat the item now, it's not going to cause any health problems right away. Well, in that environment, it very well did. And these levels are not high, so it would not cause any health problems over the long term. But there's 1,800 diseases. It's 100% unequivocally going to catch up to you in the future, if not right away. Well, you're talking about the nuclear wasteland where they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. So that's a complete lie for them to suggest that there's not going to be adverse effects. If you keep eating the vegetables at the same pace, the amount of radiation intake could exceed the amount deemed safe. But as the radiation levels continue to rise, we're looking at the possibility of levels reaching levels that may harm human health. And there's a lot of chaos. This is this is 12 days after the tsunami. And uh, eight days or so after the last reactor blew up. So everything is covered in massive radioactive fallout at that stage because the original inventories was a massive pulse. And it was also distributed right around the planet, but Japan was brutal. Import alert covered milk, milk products, fresh vegetables, fruits from any of the four prefectures. So now they're acknowledging not just Fukushima, but Ibaragi, Tichigi, and Guma. Those products will be prevented from entering the United States. So what they done was shipped it to Britain, relabel it, and then shipped it to the United States. The Environmental Protection Agency, that would be Americans, said its air monitors, three in California, one in Washington, Detected levels of radiation were millions of times below levels of concern. But every level is of concern. And like we've heard that statement quite a bit from the first month or so. <clears throat> they, they use that version a lot. No, oh, it's millions of times. It was actually 220 million atoms per liter of rainfall in Ottawa, Canada. All of America was buried in Canada and radioactive fallout was sustained for extended periods. As the Navy continued to distribute potassium iodine to personnel, the services instructing sailors to come within 100 miles of the damaged reactors to take the pills. Wow, and so I never heard that one before. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have been checked for radiation levels. And they aired what was considered the first interview with the workers. It settled down quite a lot compared to the beginning. It should make you pretty upset when you hear these people. This incredible hubris arrogance that they exude. This is a model of the fallout. Remember, it pulses en energy every second at the speed of light each atom. You can't see it or smell it or taste it or hear it or feel it or touch it or pick it up. But you're looking at the whole planet covered in 16 days of radioactive fallout, according to the French. As for the Plant 6 Reactors Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency, the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency official claimed that they connected to Reactor 1 and the fire trucks were used to eject seawater into the core to cool it. The problem is they're under 1,000 PSI, so there's no way to inject water in their fire hose or not. But that's the head, or the official, 
of the nuclear safety agency stabbing you in the throat. International Atomic Energy Agency, Tuesday, that the cooling unit was covered by about half of the fuel rods in the reactor one, two, and three. And Japan officials believe the cores have been damaged. Like if half of it was covered in water, the other half is not. If half, any of it's not, it catches fire immediately because of the zirconium cladding. That'll melt at 2,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures and will set fire to the plutonium uranium pellets. They'll burn at 9,000. And it doesn't matter if the rest is underwater, that'll catch fire too. It doesn't need oxygen to burn, right? And we showed you the pictures. Was unit three covered half in water? No, it went a mile up into the sky. Was reactor one covered in water? No, it, it went hundreds and hundreds of meters up into the sky. Number two, reactor power has not been restored, but the core was a stable and the works were continued to inject seawater into the spent fuel storage pool, and which uh, this is the 23rd. There's zero possibility that's true. The doses, there are lethal doses everywhere during that period. The IAEA said after an explosion March the 15th, which is reactor three, officials expressed concern the containment vessel may no longer be intact. And that's reactor three blown up. So there isn't, there's no reactor, let alone containment. If the number three reactor, the electricity was restored to the central control room. And the Tokyo Fire Department was expected to start spraying water into the spent fuel storage pool on Wednesday. <clears throat> so, Like, lying is second nature. That's all they know how to do. They're, they're professional lawyers. They, it's impossible to get them to tell the truth a single time. When it comes to nuclear accident, they're just going to murder everything for their paycheck. They'll kill everybody for their paycheck. Let me show you a picture of reactor three right after... Remember, the fuel pools are at the very top of the building. There's two of them, right? So reactor three is right here. Right? There, there's nothing left. There's no spent fuel pool, no reactor core, there's no containment. It's the same thing for reactor four. And so right away, they were, they were organized enough but they weren't organized perfect. And so we catch them with a lot of these discrepancies. Is fuel included plutonium mixed with, it was called mixed oxide fuel. It's already gone through a chain reaction once. It should never go through a chain reaction again. The, because the reactor, now the time of reactor four, because the reactor had no fuel rods, well it did, when, you, when you're changing, do maintenance, Half to only at best at most half the reactor core is going to be changed, so they're not going to take it all out. They weren't shut down for nine months or or a year or something. This was just a normal shutdown where they might do nine thousand maintenance jobs. You bring in a thousand people or fourteen hundred people or whatever to do the maintenance because you don't want their cancer registry to go crazy like it did by 2012 was extra 865,000 extra cancers. Cancers typically last of the 1800 diseases to get to manifest and get diagnosed. Not everybody got health care. Not everybody was diagnosed on top of it. Not even a fraction, really. <clears throat> the focus was on continuing spray uh, the rods in the reactor four fuel pool. And reactor four fuel pool, 
have completely gone. They stripped it, uh, all that damage you're looking at to, to your left, to the fuel uh, reactor four building. They stripped that down to the building on the right. There's nothing left. All right, so it did look like the building to your left. They stripped it down, and then they put a fake cap on it and pretended that they were in the fuel pool. Now, Arnie Gunnarsson helped them do it, with the lie, that is, and people to the right, there's many like it, pretending they're in a fuel pool of a building that don't even exist. Fifteen hundred highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. If they've got to move them outside of this reactor. Now that's uh, Cecilia Vega. She's currently a White House press um, journalist. She's working for some of the biggest medias on the planet currently, as we speak. Right. That's just the way it is, I suppose. Oh, to be a monster like Cecilia Vega. And she makes a lot of money being a monster, so good for her. Way to go. Congratulations. Is uh, the fuel... Its fuel was plutonium uranium. I think we lost it, we? Power has been connected to number five, number six reactor on the 23rd? No. Um, I'm going to try. But that was right away. And so this next one, kind of confusing because it was from Voice on YouTube. I was watching it. I was wondering when we were going to get to the propaganda because Voice is really bad with propaganda. Voice is really bad with propaganda. Yeah, the Fukushima tunnels were in an article today, yeah. Tunnels will help vent harmful rumors. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, there's a movie coming out about Oppenheimer. Can you imagine what kind of propaganda that's going to be? They spent a fortune on it. Well, I, I shouldn't say nothing until the movie's out. I got my fingers crossed. I'm hoping for the best. But anyway, I was, I'm just going to flick. There's a lot of these pictures, so we'll just run through the pictures. I was waiting for the propaganda, but I didn't really find it. I wasn't paying a lot of attention. Uh, they were just running through the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Enola Gale, the dropping of the first bomb, the destruction, the deaths, the radiation diseases and fallouts. So I was like, wait a second, are they actually going to be honest? That'll be weird. That kind of weird me out to have them honest. So the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, when you look at, like, First off, that's a shit job you got right there, buddy. You're going to get sick and die from that exposure. And the military knew all of this, that the people that they were sending in there from the military, they were human guinea pigs, and their children would be too. You had all their missiles. They're, they're, these are weirdos, eh? They do. Their whole job is to kill as many as possible. What a great job for a small paycheck. 
Let's kill everything. And I don't know. Marshall Islands, Hawaii Islands, Marshall Islands. They talked about how radioactive the Bikini Atolls were. They talked about the terrible things they'd done to the victims, which completely surprised me that they even acknowledged that on voice. And the harm that they caused to these people, it was just shocking. They actually moved a lot of these people back a couple of days later. And then they used uh, the word bikini to glamorize the destructions of the victims that didn't understand. They didn't even have a word for rude, right? The, the natives. They had no education. They had no one to defend them. And the nuclear industry immediately went into predator mode. And the doses were horrific. It was horrific doses throughout, even today, right? Over a million square kilometers is highly radioactive out there right now. According to a 2019 study, they, they sank these ships right on the front door of all these people on these little islands. They must have done some laughing. I was at a great time thinking about how they're going to leave all this radiation behind. Then they put a lot of the radiation in a big hole in the ground and put a fragile concrete uh, dome over it that leaks like a skiff. Don't worry, slaves, we'll be back. We like to study our human guinea pigs. They'd spend so much, they built communities just to blow them up. There's nothing else compares to it. They've never done this for other bombs. They've only done this for nuclear bombs. And they contaminated the entire... These were nuclear wars. When you set off these bombs, that's a nuclear war. And the underground bombs, you can see, they're not underground no more. They breached the ground, right? They all done that. So they had all these carpenters and pipe fitters and engineers, and they built these beautiful homes and filled it up with food and trinklets and dummies and then blew it up so they could study the radiation. These are, that's a sickness. That's a, pro-nuclear is actually a disease. It's an actual disease, isn't it, to do that? And they knew what they were doing. They were good at the weather. They knew where the wind was going to blow. They'd done the same thing for the French Polynesian Islands, the French did. Uh, the British done the same thing for Australia. They waited for the wind to blow across Australia. Yeah, set it off. Right, they were they're very methodical about all of this, too. Hard cases. The native communities were everywhere, just nuclear. The first thing they done was attack the native community with waste everywhere where there's nuclear. They sought out the native community and they destroyed the water tables, their land and the air. Every single country done that, that had a significant nuclear presence. Every single country. So like they were talking about the natives where they no idea what was going on. They wake up, look at the window and here were these nuclear explosions not that far from them. And they had no idea what it was, right? But when they got older and all their loved ones and children and friends were dying of vicious cancers and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies, 
and they were able to learn about radiation, then they appreciated what really happened to them. It was 100% done on purpose. But I, I mean, no other industry has done this that we know of. You got the small modular bombs you shoot from cannons, nuclear bombs and cannons. And then, oh, well, we got you drove through a nuclear wasteland. We got to check your car. There's the kids. Every nuclear country immediately dumped their waste in their natives' properties and waters and everything else. Every one of them. And if you go way back. If you go way back to the radium craze, yeah, all the all the American tribes, film badges are required, but they don't actually work very good. They're only going to get maybe one one thousandth of your exposure. Because that's, that's a nuclear war. It, you don't have to fire it in anger. It's still a nuclear war. It's still radioactive fallout. It's still a... It's a nuclear war, right? And so even the underground explosions, you see how they, they open up the ground? They lift it up and throw everything up into the air? So you're not, you, underground explosions don't stop it from getting into the environment. And there were studies shown it actually being injected into the upper tropospheres. The water, fresh water within 1800 um, circumference, 1800 miles circumference, the fresh water would change the structure. They don't know why it done that. But this is far past a nuclear weapon, the fresh water, which changes structure. I remember when I first seen those studies, I was like, what? What the hell is this? They had even planted their own trees all nicely in a row. The, the only thing you can call this industry is batshit crazy and dangerous, extremely dangerous. That's a nuclear war, see? And radiation doesn't care that you've done it as a test. It's still a nuclear war. And so the Hiroshima was a thousand Hiroshima bombs, or the, the Castle Bravo in the Bikini Islands was equal to a thousand Nagasaki bombs going off at the one time. That's a nuclear war. Americans dropped two, right? These small 15 kiloton bombs. That was a nuclear war, yeah? So when you set off a thousand, call it a test, that's still a nuclear war. It's the same fallout. The whole world should take that to heart. The Waste Isolation Pilot Project, which is the original name of it, it was just an experiment, and they're like, nobody's looking. Let's put all kinds of waste out there. The whip uh, ventilation shaft. So this is just the oxygen ventilation shaft. This is nine years later. They still, after an accident nine years ago, they still don't have full airflow in the mine shafts because they radiated the original uh, ventilation system. These are massive, massive systems. They're very expensive systems. And they, uh, they had a meltdown and they tried to blame it on a truck fire. Well, never tried. That's what they've done. They spent around six billion altogether to try to fix it up. <laughs> and he said, no, no, the only thing we're putting down there is um, 
radioactive gloves, contaminated gloves, contaminated overalls, contaminated tools from radiation, right? Well, if that was true, why did you abandon it for many years? Why did you spend $6 billion trying to fix it? Because the only thing can cause that much radiation is if you're putting legacy nuclear waste down there. Yeah, and that's because all the waste is coming from the legacy sites. <laughs> you know, you number 55 football field size caverns. The largest construction project in 30 years and increase the airflow will mean the waste emplacement activities to facility for the U.S. military programs. From the U.S. military programs. Does anybody really believe it's uh, contaminated tools and that they're putting down there? Transuranic waste from the U.S. military program. It's going to cost U.S. $75 million, and they began the shaft in 2020. $75 million to build a shaft. So let's say it's go all the way 2,275 feet. That's $32,000 a foot. So it costs $32,000 for each foot depth. What a scam, eh? What a bunch of disgusting scammers. This is why nuclear is so so weird. Because you're so used to robbing everything. You're so used to robbing everything. I like the shadows up there. I zoomed in on the shadows. Yeah, we're getting $33,000 for each foot of shaft that we drill. That's the best scam since the last one. $33,000 for each foot. That's why there's no nuclear renaissance in America right there, folks. United Kingdom's Berkeley decommissioning work brought forward by 50 years. 50 years! How the hell did you get 50 years? Like, really, how did you manage to jump 50 years into the future? So this is in the United Kingdom. And this is on a major estuary at the very mouth of, look at that. Those sadistic demons. They got uh, 2,400 2, tons of what they call metallic, which is radioactive. This was originally planned for 2070. But he, and somebody's trying to sell it, right? So it's fantastic to bring it forward by five decades. Our aim is to deliver our mission better, faster, and even safer. And even safer. Well, the reason you wait until 20 to 70 because it's not safe because we have many examples of why we waited the extra 50 years. So all of a sudden, you're going to do it better, faster, and safer. And they don't, they don't give you any context of what they're doing, how they're going to do it face, f safer, faster, and better. The high-quality steel removal will be treated, recycled, treated. The, the time of very, very radioactive material, you can't treat that. So they're going to knock it ahead 50 years early it's going to be incredibly radioactive. They're going to treat it, recycle it, and return the metal to the market for reuse. And expect 95% of the metal will be decontaminated, decontaminated, which you can't decontaminate metal. 
enough to re allow recycling. Like whoever's going to do the decontamination is going to get brutal doses. You can't kill radiation by smeltering it. You're just going to liberate it back into the environment. You can't kill it in forest fires. You're just going to liberate it back into the environment. Decontaminated enough. Well, it's not hard to know this is United Kingdom, the British. They're just revolting, aren't they? When it comes to nuclear, every time we come across a British story, it's like these are monsters. The nuclear industry in Britain, I, I always feel bad for the British people because the nuclear industry is an unbelievable bunch of monsters. In 2010, after 21 years of decommissioning work, the unit became the first to be sealed up and placed in safety. So they just dumped a bunch of cement in it and sealed it up. <laughs> a passive state which defueled extensively decommissioned units will be monitored, maintained until the site is completely cleared in about 65 years. And you got 6,666 containers of waste as what they call sludge cans. I just, I hate the, the British nuclear industry and the Australian nuclear industry and the Canadian nuclear industry. I, I hate them with every freaking fiber of my body because I've covered them so much over these years. They're, they're just disgusting creatures. They're actually despicable creatures, any way you can describe them. I'm trying to figure out what they're talking about here. A single silo houses charge rods. <laughs> These are used fuel rods. And the chutes used to discharge fuel. So I'm not sure what the frig they're talking about. Chutes used to discharge fuel. Like the, the Magnox graphite reactors, right, they jacked people off the street in 57 in Sellafield and from the theaters and took them to the meltdown to push the fuel rods out of the channels into the chutes. From underground vaults. So they got a lot of it stored in 20 or 30 feet under the ground because of the gamma shines, neutron bombardments, the x-rays and everything else. So this is the picture I dug up of the site and it's surrounded by farms. Vicious, vicious, vicious. That's really something, isn't it? So they show you these pictures, right? Because they're condensed pictures. But when you go investigate it yourself, as usual, surrounded by farms, right up to the site. But if you go driving by and stop your car and get out and take a picture, you'll be confronted by the nuclear police authority. It's really, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's so much contempt. Has the nuclear power industry condemned itself beyond repair by faking Japan's reactors four and three? And that's what we kind of started to show off today, reactor four and three. And reactor four and three up there, they, what they done was fake the fuel pools pretend that they're in the fuel pools of both Reactor 4 and Reactor 3. And it's unforgivable that that is happening and that there's no universities, there's no institutions, there's no foundations out there trying to have a conversation. They're all regurgitating the same law, same as the tanks, right? Everybody's out there regurgitating that law verbatim without fact-checking a single thing.
which jeopardizes all the species and the future of humanity dramatically each day that this deceit goes on we are going down a black hole that we do not want to be going down and we should fight with every fiber in our body so it's kind of hard to comprehend how big these reactors actually are but this was the the bottom of reactor one housing was built off site originally and then it was assembled after with uh, remote control cranes so you can see how big the building is when you look at it this way see how big it is so when you see reactor three and four it's hard to comprehend how big these buildings actually were right so what you're looking at there would be underneath this here and the building should be that high and in reality it's just these little stumps left so they faked it and they had all the media support them to do it they didn't do it on their own right Uh, so the reactors at Berkeley in the United Kingdom. Number two was shut down in 1988 and reactor one was in 1989. And the cooling ponds uh, over a decade later. The U.S. Department of Energy pushes ahead with the HALU development, fuel development. This is the high SA fuel. This is weapons or military grade fuel we're talking about. So the theory is the only way they can make their, their large, small modular reactors work is if they use vicious, ridiculously vicious fuel. And once you even if say you got these reactors to work on that fuel the problem was and will be for a billion years is the emissions from that fuel once it's out of the containment it's still splitting the atoms into the environment and uh, this stuff never goes away and it's absurdly toxic to everything with replicating cells And the nuclear industry, this is all about military, right? They don't, their job is to kill everything. And they're really good at it. They take it to a whole different level. A game-changing vision for geothermal energy. And we covered that last night, did we? Let me check before I go down that road again. Uh, geothermal could reach 60 gigawatts by 2050 in America of geothermal. They could do uh, infinitely better than that. That's quasi-electric. They want to replace all gas, oil, and coal plants, every one of them, with geothermal. So it's significantly more than 60 gigawatts, which is equal to 60 large nuclear power plants, I'll add. But geothermal can replace all gas, oil, coal, and nuclear plants worldwide. And the only thing holding it up is how do you drill down deep enough? Which is not that deep, all things considered, but it is when it comes to the tools and time. So last night I covered at the beginning of the show two techniques that are able to accomplish that. And so if we took a bunch of universities and tried to solve the problem, we could have it solved by Thursday or next week. No, let's spend a hundred years and try to figure out fusion, Dana. Yeah, but geothermal exists. No, that's okay. I've been there, done that. 
We need something new. It's emergency. We need something right away, Dana. Yeah, when well, geothermal is available right away. Yeah, no, no, fusion. We'll get us somewhere in the next hundred years because, you know, we need to, right? We need something right away. You get how crazy that conversation actually is? Could drill 20 kilometers, 12 miles to utilize heat from dry rock formations, which are much hotter and available in almost all parts of the world. And they, you can just do it in, you can create all kinds of these devices and drill away to your heart's content. And remember, there's a lot of industries out there knows how to drill. This is not like rocket science. The only problem is the bits that they're currently using are only effective to certain depths. And in order to get the extra hot temperatures, you've got to go a few extra miles down. Um, not everywhere, but most places. Every time I see anything from the Nuclear Engineering International, because I covered this for so long and so much, um, They'll never put their name on a story. They don't want their children finding out what they write. Uh, why oil joints like Chevron and BP, scum degenerate BP, are investing in geothermal energy. Like the reason everybody's been screaming carbon is because of a public relation campaign by BP oil to blame you for using the oil is why they had a cheap boat that broke down and drifted up on the rocks and contaminated the coastline. Not because he cheaped out. No, no, that's normal, apparently. Because you need oil. They can't exist unless you buy oil, by the way. So that was quite the betrayal to have a big campaign and then the United Nations picked up with it and ran with it and uses that to bludgeon everybody worldwide and now we're taxed into non-existence anymore. UK to provide additional 900 USD funding to the International Atomic Energy Agency. They already provided them with $6 million so the IAEA can go to the nuclear plant in Ukraine. And they've done nothing each time. Got on a plane, flew down, done a press conference, and they got back and uh, cashed a check. There, uh, the IAEA shouldn't exist. Why everybody, everybody's like they're, they're hypnotized. The IAEA said it, Dana, it must be true. Yeah, but they're not a regulatory, they're a corporation. They don't have any sovereignty over anybody's country on top of that. They're a subsidy of the Degenerate League of Nations, now known as United Nations which is the military and industrial complex that has 195 militaries. It's just a persona, a very persona of evil. And you see these typical bootlickers, lapdog cheerleaders for nuclear industry. For a timely green energy transition, nuclear, for a timely, nuclear is the most resource intensive industry on the entire planet, it takes forever. It's the very last one to show up at the finish line every time. And you say for a timely green energy transition. It's even worse than that. They're talking about... They're talking about... Um, the New Nuclear Watch Institute. The New Nuclear Watch Institute. And then, like, you think about that co company down in Seattle called Safe Nuclear? That's the name of the company. Anything to brainwash, you see? Well, it must be safe. They, they call it safe all the time. No, that's the name of the company, Safe Nuclear. <laughs> there is no Safe Nuclear, except for a company named Safe Nuclear. I hate these people here. This is a fusion. We covered this a little while ago. This German startup is building a revolutionary nuclear reactor, Proxima Fusion. They're not building jack shit. Right? And the media comes out with these like 
oh my god this is a fantastic story but it's the same bucket of shit and neither one of them got a lid on them on top of that just a hundred percent propaganda each time okay everybody smile like you like each other bunch of inbreeds right that's how they got the job in the first place Energy security crucial to consider for geothermal in Peru. So you see all kinds of countries now paying attention to geothermal. And they're talking like 40 to $50 a megawatt on the high end. Experts discussing geothermal prospects in Armenia. Peru, Armenia, Chile, El Salvador. Everywhere but Canada and the United States. Everybody else, this is great, man. This is simple. We can do it in no time at all. America and Canada. Well, we've got to have nuclear. And Europe and French and Britain. Oh, we can't do nothing without nuclear? So you can't have a future with these people. They've ruined it for all 8 million species. IAEA completes International Physical Protection Advisory Service Mission in Kuwait. In Kuwait. Like the highway of death out of Kuwait, right, with the, with the Kuwaiti, uh, Iraqi, Iraq went into Kuwait and looted Kuwait, right? And so when they were leaving, the Ba'ath Party was leaving, uh, they were they were driving out in Rolls Royces and Mercedes Benz they stole from the dealerships, stuffed with exotic paintings and looted banks and jewelry shops and and rich people's houses and and exotic furniture and stuff like this. So the Americans came in with the A ten Warthog. And you, because they only shoot dirty bombs, completely rainy munitions, and blew them to hell. And they had to bury him right there in the desert, money, gold, diamonds, silver, Mercedes and all, because everything was one great big stupid nuclear wasteland from the massive 700 tons of depleted uranium munitions that they used. And a Japanese scientist at a Hamburg conference in Germany calculated it was the animosity equivalent of 44,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of radioactive low-level fallout, 44,000. It never goes away on top of it. It's already gone through a chain reaction. That's what the depleted uranium, the dull ram, the depleted uranium low-level radioactive material actually used to be called. Yeah. Such as, get a load of this one. With the focus on security of radio, radioactive sources, such as for bloody radiation, this blows me away. They're radiating blood in the hospitals. <laughs> the, the industry is so evil, it thinks it's natural, see? Like that's that's a whole different level of evil right there. We left he evil at the gate. That's what the industry done. And high precision cancer treatment. Like I've done presentations just on studies of radiation in hospitals, and if they can treat a tumor with radiation, you end up with six or seven tumors everywhere else over the next year or two. Like there's, there's no way to escape the harm when you use radiation. The next, uh, nuclear renaissance. We believe the tide is turned in uranium and we're entering the next nuclear renaissance. 
Well, like, how, how can you say that when there's no nuclear reticence in Canada, there's no nuclear reticence in America, there's no nuclear reticence in France, there's no nuclear reticence in the United Kingdom, right? There's just uh, posturing. There's no actual construction. There's no actual... Um, Right, there's there's no supply network. There's no there's no employees. Like France has to t train people to weld, so they can fix the broken reactors they currently got. There there is no workforce. Right, the last nuclear renaissance was fifty years ago. The workforce has moved on a long time ago and died from exposures alone. And it's outrageous uh, that they would say. Some of the graphics, though, um, there's the production. But this one uh, in the United States, look how the United States disappeared after 2018. Right? So, or 2018, it dropped right down. But you can see the decline 2014, 2018. Well, in 2018, 2019, there's literally, compared to the other years, nothing. Right? There's really nothing going on there. <clears throat> yeah. Yeehaw. Struggling. The Russia's invasion of Ukraine is driving a desire for greater energy security, which is completely artificial, by the way. Right? They put embargoes against a country they had no way of replacing it. And then the great savior was going to be small modular reactors and nuclear fusion, which we know clearly now a year later is not going to materialize. But the proxy of it was was inflation worldwide immediately. And that has now affected uh, several billion people permanently. It's called social engineering, by the way. And it's unbelievable evil what we're talking about. It's monstrously evil. As a Banksy, yeah. <sighs> How's the stream going, folks? It's, uh, Showing uh, current bit rate is a bit low on my end. Oh, now it says excellent connection. <laughs> Way to go, make a lawyer out of me, YouTube. Geothermal could replace coal on the Arctic island, where all the polar bears are emaciated because of Fukushima. Norwegian. Geothermal energy heating option for the Faroe Islands. New mining code, a disaster for geothermal in France. Yeah, and France is good at scuttling anything that competes with nuclear. Minor leak at a nuclear submarine dock. Britain. Britain's something else, isn't it? A minor seawater leak at a nuclear naval base is going to cost $3 million to repair the leak. A minor leak. Minor. How much is going to cost to fix? Oh, is it just a leak? Okay, how much is that going to be? $3 million. But it's a leak, right? It's 100% a leak. And there's a leak, and there's a leak, and there's a leak, and there's a leak. 
So this was right to, using the word leak over and over and over and over. That's your typical cover story. That's not an accident to have the word leak that many times in a row. Because we cover it, every time it's nuclear, you'll hear the word leak, and then you'll hear it over and over and over and over, and have a nice day, sucker. That's what nuclear is good at doing. Let's keep it rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. So this story, concerned about nuclear energy direction for... J A. I can't remember where that's to. His young university graduate of degree in physics and applied physics. I was an ardent advocate of nuclear power in Jamaica. Argued the use of nuclear power was necessary to generate abundant, cheap energy to allow Jamaica to develop manufacturing industries like aluminum and other finished goods, providing much needed jobs and economic growth. So we've heard this whole thing last part many times. At the time, I dismissed the cons as environmental pollution safety issues being irrelevant and a secondary concern. But with advancing years and hopefully a little more wisdom, I've come to my senses that we have an obligation to pass our only planet onto our descendants and the condition is no worse than we found it. <laughs> Pretty hard to do that now. We screwed up pretty bad. Well, we didn't. The nuclear industry sabotaged everybody's future. And so Jamaica talking about putting nuclear is a ridiculous statement, right? And they're talking about small modular reactors that don't exist. And we never got no updates on Hokkaido in Japan Island after the original story came out. And all the headlines that I found, I don't know, and this is a story about the earthquake and they show you all these bags, which is really confusing. Very, very confusing. <laughs> but that, hey, I'm not complaining because I don't think I have that particular picture before. Now I do, so that's good. I got so many pictures, you can't keep up with it. Nuclear fusion remains decades away despite a major breakthroughs. There was no major breakthrough, though. That's the scam industry that it is. The National Ignition Facility in California achieved net positive energy. And then the lead wasn't even there to back it up. Which was really interesting, I thought. After decades of progress so incremental and expensive, it may have seemed pointless. Critics still question whether creating an artificial sun on Earth will ever be affordable and energy efficient enough to make a real impact on the global energy industry. No, this is about weapons. This has got nothing to do with energy. This is disguised. And they're willing to loot all the natural resources in the solar system for this technology. So it's a very dangerous technology. A lot of hope was placed in the future of nuclear fusion. In short, it would bring us endless energy and world peace. Yeah. And would and world peace to boot. However, news of nuclear fusion world saving capabilities has almost certainly been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> been greatly exaggerated is right. Uh, nuclear power is small modular reactor future. Could help expand the use of electricity and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. These are all garbage can excuses, right? Nuclear power currently provides about 11% of the world's electricity. Well, that's only because as reactors are shutting off, the rest of them have to be bumped up a few, a few percentages to make up for the lot of 
So they're all running on dangerous numbers now. So they keep time for small modular reactors as if they're going to have them tomorrow or the next day. We've seen that a lot lately where they use those connotations. We even seem saying that they exist and, uh, you know, well, basically everything that they talk about is propaganda. Well, we'll call it propaganda, but it's actual lies. It's, uh, it's 100% lies. This is completely incontestable. Four geothermal areas ready for development in West Java. A total installed generation capacity of around 1,200 megawatts, 1 1.2 gigawatts from seven geothermal complexes. That's real, man. Which is something like a large, that's a large chunk of their energy. Which is pretty impressive for that part of the country. Review in New Zealand's geothermal planning regulatory framework. So you can see geothermal is starting to show up in the lexicon everywhere all of a sudden, right? Replacing heating and cooling equipment with geothermal solutions. Because you can, you can get rid of, like that's your most expensive energy is heating and cooling, right? So air conditioners and, and electric heat and stuff like that or even gas, whatever, it's very expensive, right? Geothermal can get rid of that. And I mean, it's there 24 hours a day. And you can, you can just have your own geothermal on your property on top of that. New startup targeting geothermal development in Ireland. Gonna, they're aiming to use the gas and oil industry's drilling technology to tap into geothermal in Ireland. Because the nuclear industry is desperate to get Ireland to have a nuclear power plant. It's illegal in Ireland to have a nuclear power plant, if I remember correctly. Same as Australia, right? Former coal mines in Britain are being tested to see if they can become a geothermal energy plants. And because the water is going to stay at the same temperatures, they can just circulate their hoses through it. And when it comes out the other side, is you got that proper temperature to try and... What's going on at Australia's aging nuclear campus? They've had a lot. This is a test reactor. And holy shit, they've had a lot of accidents, these guys. Like, my goodness, these are just accident magnets. These are absurd accident machines is probably the best way to look. I'm not going to go. Australia always pisses me off. And uh, I'm not going to cover it tonight. You know, I probably should. There's currently 222 operational research reactors in 54 countries around the world, according to the Degenerate Scum International Atomic Energy Agency. A further 23 research reactors in 16 countries are either planned or under construction. 79 reactors in 30 countries are in either temporary, extended, a permanent shutdown, and 517, 517 are under decommissioning or have been decommissioned. So 517 test reactors are either decommissioning or been decommissioned. 517 disease factories. Wow. That's a stunning statement. That 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 is a stunning, unbelievable statement, isn't it?
And do we expect any less scummery, scumbaggery from the nuclear industry? Probably not. I got no idea what I got done now. Let me go backwards. <clears throat> well, whenever you... I got to bring that up, I guess. Yeah, I can't. I lost the headline on this one. I didn't grab it uh, accidentally. Oh, this is still Australia. Much needed money for upgrading the Lucas Heights nuclear campus. And so the Peach Bottom nuclear plant. So this is the Peach Bottom nuclear plant. Look in the background, is that farms? Or is that farms? Yeah, that's farms. Why is it almost every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms? All the easier to poison you. Peach Bottom. Um, Two active nuclear reactors triggered by a 2022 safety protocol violation an inspection could wrap up this week. Both active reactors at the plant received a total of 6,300 hours of baseline inspections, which is 250 days or something, 260 days, rather. Of in 260 days, 24 hours a day of inspections. But when you have an earthquake at a nuclear plant, two hours later, there was no abnormalities at the nuclear power plant. But it takes 260 days to inspect it. Geothermal energy, a revolutionary energy source for a green Europe. Geothermal has huge potential as a future energy. Well, you can have it right away. You can have it up and running in one year. Right? That's the beauty of it. For thousands of years, people have been using geothermal. It actually exists. Geothermal energy can keep the lights on in Texas. Geothermal energy could be cheaper to access thanks to the new drilling technology. We covered that last night. This was high-pressure water jets, which would open up the ground, and they could also use uh, pneumatic hammers to break up the rocks so now the drills can go right through it at big depths. It's a great idea. And quasi-electric is going to use a special beam to evaporate the rocks rather than drill them and be able to go down much deeper than conventional drills could. Ontario, Canada, had elevated risk for power outages due to nuclear refurbishment. <laughs> that was a crazy scam, right? When Fukushima happened, they grabbed uh, $26 billion before people figured out how evil nuclear was. France says nuclear power is non-negotiable, which is quite the interesting statement because last year half their fleet was down and they were dependent on all the neighboring countries to give them power. Even today they're doing that. The U.S. Department of Energy announced 14.5 million to accelerate the deployment of geothermal and a further 6 billion for nuclear. <laughs> geothermal gets some pocket change. The nuclear industry that can't produce its small modular reactors and fusion gets billions and billions and billions and they know they're not going to produce anything. But geothermal, they get pittance. Because you can't, if they succeed, then you won't need nuclear. 
and then all the, the scum nuclear industry will have uh, will have seizures. Well, I guess that's it for us tonight. We got a $50 donation from Stephen Young last night and a $100 from Michael S. last night. So that brings us up to $300 now. We got put aside for the website. That makes me feel really good. So it's another 100 or something by Saturday. And I'm so happy we got 300 gathered up. I don't care. <laughs> I'm super happy. Because that was bothering me for the last couple of weeks because I got everything else on top of my shoulders, right? So that's, that took a lot of pressure off my shoulders. I feel pretty good about that today. I'm in much better shape. That, that, there was a lot of stress anyway for me, so I'm pretty grateful. And uh, let's close down the poll. We made it through. It was a tough show tonight. Got a tough audience tonight. Just kidding you. Has the nuclear power industry condemned itself beyond repair by faking Japan's reactors four and reactor three fuel pools? I think they have. I think that's why we're seeing the world turning on nuclear is because because they were so vicious for so many years and they went overboard. In order to protect their story, they had to be extra, they had to be super evil compared to just the normal evil that they are. And I think they, under, they, they can't recover from it. If just one celebrity and one academic, one, one Hollywood superstar, one major football player, one, one person with a big following tweets out the fake pictures of Reactor 4 where they're pretending they're in the building that don't exist, the industry immediately dies. It can't survive the truth. And that's how they see it, right? They, 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 they feel they can't survive the truth, and so they go to extremes. <coughs> so by pretending they're in a building that don't exist, so by pretending they're in a building that don't exist, they have dug a hole they can't get out of. Eventually, this will come back and haunt them forever, right? This will ultimately destroy them. And uh, we couldn't be happier. If anybody deserves to be destroyed, it's the nuclear industry. They're the curse of millions of species. Every generation for history, for the future, will curse the nuclear industry. And they, and they all know in the nuclear industry what's going on. They know this is fake. They know they're faking it. And uh, they're vicious. Look what they've done to me just over the years. It's horrific. The assaults, the attacks, the arrests, the demonization, the, the propaganda was really, really something. They have attacked me from every other direction too, not just from nuclear, to discredit me. So there's, it's really shocking. But he didn't count on the fact that uh, I don't give a shit. Uh, I'm an honest person, and, and you can lie about me all you want. <laughs> it's not going to change me. Pretending that I'm a bad person by putting out propaganda doesn't make me a bad person. But the, pretending you're a good person doesn't make you a good person in the nuclear industry. And they don't even try to pretend they're good people. They don't have a single person in the entire nuclear industry that people worldwide can relate to. They don't have, so they, they, they use Elon Musk and, and Bill Gates as their poster child, which are the worst poster childs, by the way, you can imagine. It's all good. Gonna end the poll in 38 votes. 
Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we got a great show in the pipeline for everybody. Another 24 hour news cycle. I like those shows we done last week on uh, the first 30 days. Holy shit, there was so much information in those shows. I should dig around and see what else I got there. Because that was dynamite stuff. Okay, well, that, was a, that was a tough gig. Hugs for everybody, we'll see everybody tomorrow night. Thank you for finding time, the courage, and the energy to join this stream. It's well appreciated. I'll catch up with everybody tomorrow. Have a great night and a great day tomorrow. Hugs for you and your loved ones and your pets and your friends and your families. We'll see everybody on the next one. Take care, folks. Don't forget to click the thumbs up if you get a chance. Take care.